Hello and welcome to Aqua Lifestyle. I'm Glenn Hayes and today we're going to look at the Simrad Cruise line of chart plotter fish finders. Now I've used a lot of chart plotters on all different sized vessels all over the world and this guy is about as simple and as easy as it gets. They designed this as an entry level chart plotter and that's exactly what it is. It's very simple, very easy to use. So let's take a look and see what it can do. The unit we'll be looking at today is a Simrad Cruise 9, but the 5 and 7 inch versions operate exactly the same way. Let's see what's in the box. First is a welcome sheet with contact information should you need help. Next is the installation paperwork. Looks like the screen is well protected and well wrapped. Notice that there's no dust cover included with this uh, display head, so remember that's an option with these guys and you may have to order one. The transducer and mounting hardware are included in this box. Let's take a look and see what's in here. This particular transducer comes with a sturdy metal bracket for the transducer. It's a nice feature and is much better and stronger than plastic ones. Next up is your power cord. Real simple, just a positive and negative lead and a push in plug. Then you've got an inline fuse. And here's your transducer. Simple, small unit, easy to operate, about a 20 to 25 foot cable and a push in plug. Next up are your knobs for the bracket. And down here is the bracket itself. Gimbal mount, easy install. Down at the bottom here, we should have our, yep mounting screws and corner pieces for the display. One thing you want to remember with these guys is when you go to plug the power cord in it has a keyway and it's got a rubber grommet down at the bottom. It's very important to match up that keyway properly for the power cord it's in the 12 o'clock position. You've got your two outlets in the back here but when you go to push it in you want to make sure the keyway is lined up and you push it all the way in. You may feel that it's all the way in there, but push it a little bit further, make sure it's completely snug and down inside the unit. If you don't, you're going to end up having power supply issues where it might shut off, vibrate and shut itself off. The same thing with the transducer. You want to make sure it's pushed in nice and tight all the way. The transducer might show that uh, it's not connected otherwise. All right, so we got the power connected here. Let's power it up and see what happens. My favorite part, peeling the plastic off. Here we go. The first time you power it up, it'll take you through the basic setup. You can use the directional keys on the right and the check button to make your selections and enter in the settings that you want. Real simple. Set up, you'll get the obligatory warning screen basically notifying you not to rely on the chart plotter as your sole means of navigation. Check accept and you're off. So you start with the home screen, which can be accessed anytime by the home screen button up top here. Below is a rotary control, which helps us select our different options. Or you can use the toggle buttons below. You can press the rotary button or click the check mark to enter. Your options are chart, echo, nav, combo 1, 2, and 3, settings, data, waypoints, trip intel, tides, and sun and moon. We'll briefly go over each of these. First, let's do the chart. So we'll select the chart, and up it comes. In the chart screen, you can zoom in and out using the rotary dial, in and out just by turning it, just like that. Very simple. And then you can move your cursor by using the toggle down below. Let's say you want to zoom into this spot. Just turn the dial, and there it is. Now you'll see there's tie bars all over the place, little T's all over the chart. If I put my cursor on one of those T's, a little window will pop up. There it is. Now if I press the check mark, that tide station will come up and give me all the tide data for that particular point. I can use a rotary dial and scale around to see the different tide stages. If I want to get back to the chart, I just hit the X button. 
to go back to the boat, I hit the X again. So that's your charts. Now we're going to go to the Echo. Select it and press the button, and up it comes. You can see the traditional sounder drawing the bottom out in detail. You have your traditional bottom picture and arches, identifying fish, and the data bar showing useful information, such as battery power. Up in this corner, you've got your depth, surface temperature, and your latitude and longitude is always at the top of the screen here. On the far right, you have a clock. So no excuses for being late for dinner. You can zoom in and out, pull up your menu, information, pressing this button. You can see we're in an auto mode, which is a great mode to leave it in. But if you want to, you can press a button and go to custom here. You can change range, frequency, gain, and go to advanced, which gives you even more customization options. If we go down to more options, it brings up things like A-scope. You can add an A-scope in. Really nice to have. And you can change your palettes. You can go from different colors here. We've got blue background, black background, white, and plenty of other options. Just pick what you like. We'll go back to what we had, white. There we go. Scrolling down, I can go to Fish ID. This allows me to put fish symbols in instead of the arcs. Depth with the fish symbols or both, like we have here. I'll go back to turn them off here at the top. And you also have fish ID beeps. That turns a beeper on every time a fish enters a beam. Some people find it useful. I find it annoying. Those are your different options with a sounder. Now you have the nav screen. Now this one will pop up and give you a highway type screen when you're steering to a waypoint or route. Here's what it looks like when you're going to a route. This arrow is your boat, and it's telling us which direction to steer in. All you do is follow along. Our heading is 34 degrees with a depth of 23 feet. If you want to do a split screen, you have our first option. It gives us a split screen with a chart plotter and our sounder screen along with the data bar. Hitting the home key, we can access our second split screen option. This one pops up and it gives us our highway screen and our chart, again along with the data bar. Hitting the home button again takes us to our third split screen option. This one gives us another combination, navigation screen and sounder, and of course the data bar all the way on the right. After hitting the home button again, we can scroll down and go to our settings down in the bottom row. This will bring up all your options for the display settings. You can scroll over and down to see each option and change it accordingly. Keep scrolling because options go beyond the bottom of the screen. You can do the same with chart, again scrolling down to see your different options. Same with echo, again scroll down and see your changes. Navigation is your other option, you can scroll and make changes there. Tracks and trips, just as it says, alarms, again make changes there, and units, you can customize it. And at the bottom, simulator, if you want to play with it without it actually being live. If we go back to home, we can access any of these screens easily. All right, so we've seen what this machine can do. Let's cover the pros and cons. Starting with the cons, you can't interface it with anything. Now, part of the simplicity of it is that it's very simple. Two wires plug in the back and that's it. Your transducer and your power cord. But that does mean you can't tie it in with anything else. If you want to interface it with a VHF or add any other features to it or tie in other controls, other devices to it, you're not able to do it. It is designed as a standalone unit. It's part of the advantage of it being simple, but if you ever want to add anything to it or tie in any kind of devices to it, you don't have that capability. So keep that in mind. Now, the pros for this machine, there are quite a few. Value for the money, you get a lot of fish finder and chart plotter for the money that you're paying for this machine. It's one of the lower price units on the market, especially going into the seven and the nine inch screens, you've got a very large screen. And for the money you're paying for that screen, it's very hard to find something that's comparable. The transducer is included in the box. That's another uh, nice feature. That's another positive. You've got a good traditional bottom sounder on here, so you can find your depths and you can see what kind of bottom easily with the transducer that's provided in the box. Basically, what's in the box is all you need to get running and get going. Very quick and simple and easy to install, too. 
if you're moderately mechanically inclined, it's not a difficult install and you can get it done within a couple, two, three hours. You can have it installed and up and running. Another pro is the operating system is very simple. It's very intuitive. Uh, with just a few minutes, you can learn how to operate pretty much anything on the machine. We're going to cover in an upcoming video the how-tos, how to create waypoints, how to set the machine up, and how to create some routes. So stay tuned for that video. If you like what you see, please hit subscribe, and don't forget to like, and stay tuned for more videos upcoming on Aqua Lifestyle. Thanks so much for watching.